Her breasts were immense, mountainous, possibly larger than the breasts of all the other women he had slept with, combined. They gave a delicious ripple as she moved, her buttocks across which the base of the negligee was stretched taut, had the ripe roundness of watermelons. <laughs> yeah, nothing more erotic than watermelons. Okay, think of something that describes her buttocks. Ah yes, some fruit. Surely this was written by a neckbeard. Her breasts were immense mountainous and possibly larger than the breasts of all the other women he had slept with combined and then a giant watermelon butt is it just me but when you hear that don't you just picture like one of those crazy anime girls that are like super out of proportion I just picture a neckbeard sitting at a typewriter in like a really old nice house <laughs> there's anime posters all over the walls he has a huge love heart shaped bed and there's like four different body pillows there and he's just sitting by the window and writing this story like that guy from misery with like a big trench coat and a fedora. No, not a fedora, a trilby. All right, I'm already rambling. Roll the intro, let's go. Hey guys, how are you? Hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for tuning back in. And welcome to some more Men Writing Women, the subreddit full of guys that really don't know how to write, and they describe women in the worst ways possible, but it's all actually pretty entertaining. Now that he was telling it all to Natasha, he experienced that pleasure which a man has when women listen to him. Not clever women who, when listening, either try to remember what they hear to enrich their minds, and when opportunity offers to retell it, or who wish to adopt it to some thought of their own and promptly contribute their own clever comments prepared in their little mental workshop but the pleasure given by real women gifted with a capacity to select and absorb the very best a man shows of himself. Oh and it goes on and on and on. A real woman who what is dumb and just bows down to men. That's what that sounded like. Oh god a woman who thinks for herself. A smart woman? Oh my god no. That's not a real woman. Icky icky gross gross yuck. She stared at him. Her her eyes wide and her mouth half open. He was trying to judge the expression on her pretty face. Either horror or an excitement that was almost sexual. He couldn't decide which. He got his answer when she finally spoke. Oh my god, so sexy. This guy is actually confusing a look of horror with a look of arousal. That's really creepy, man. <laughs> like, if you actually think about that, that's pretty weird. Oh, I'm so confused. Is she terrified or is she horny? I don't know the difference. <laughs> oh, here we go. Housekeeping monthly from 13th of May 1955. The Good Wife's Guide. Oh, this will be so interesting. Have dinner ready. Plan ahead even the night before to have a delicious meal ready on time for his return. This is a way of letting him know that you have been thinking about him and are concerned about his needs. Most men are hungry when they come home and the prospect of a good meal, especially his favourite dinner, Dish is a part of the warm welcome needed. Prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest so you'll be refreshed when he arrives. Oh my god. Touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair and be fresh looking. He has just been with a lot of work weary people. Be a little gay and a little more interesting for him. His boring day may need a lift and one of your duties is to provide it. Clear away the clutter. Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Gather up school books, toys, paper, etc. and then run a dust cloth over the tables. Over the cooler months of the year, you should prepare and light a fire for him to unwind. Oh my, oh my god. Light a fire for him to unwind by. Your husband will feel he has reached a haven of rest and order and it will give you a lift too. Is that the first time that they've said anything about them and not about their bloody husband? After all, catering for his comfort will provide you with immense personal satisfaction. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. And like, this is how the world used to be. That's insane. Prepare the children. Take a few minutes to wash the children's hands and faces. If they are small, comb their hair and if necessary, change their clothes. They are little treasures and he would... It's all about the husband, isn't it? He would like to see them playing the part. Minimize all noise. At the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise of the washer, dryer or vacuum. Oh, screw him. <laughs> Jesus. Live a life that has nothing to do with you and just fake being happy <laughs> to please
please your husband. <laughs> I would rather die. Be happy to see him. Greet him with a warm smile and show sincerity in your desire to please him. Listen to him. You may have a dozen important things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not the time. Let him talk first. Remember his topics of conversation are more important than yours. Oh, that's so gross. And this used to be so common. <laughs> this is so interesting, but also infuriating. Make the evening his. Never complain if he comes home late or goes out to dinner or other places of entertainment without you. Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure. What, just because he goes to work and you don't? He's not a bloody god. He's just a guy. <laughs> and his very real need to be at home and relax. Your goal, try to make sure that your home is a place of peace, order and tranquility where your husband can renew himself in body and spirit. This is sad. Don't greet him with complaints and problems. This has nothing to do with her. All to do with him. Don't complain if he's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Or even if he stays out all night, count this as a minor compared to what he might have done through the day. What does he do for a living? <laughs> no matter where you work, this is not justified. Make him comfortable. Have him lean back in a comfortable chair or have him lie down in the bedroom. Have a cool or warm drink ready for him. You might as well just follow him to work and give him a bloody foot rub. Arrange his pillow and offer to take off his shoes. Oh my god, they're going there. Speak in a low suit. Oh, this is ridiculous. Speak in a low, soothing and pleasant voice. Don't ask him questions about his actions or question his judgment or integrity. Remember, he is the master of the house and as such will always exercise his will with a fairness and truthfulness. Oh yeah, this is all fair, isn't it? Absolutely. You have no right to question him. And this all ends with a good wife always knows her place. Oh, that makes me want to cry. Like this comment here, in other words, take care of your other child when he comes home. Yeah, how ridiculous. It's actually unbelievable that that was normal for so many people. Crazy. Little Woman by Bobby Sherman. Hey, little woman, please make up your mind. You've got to come down into my world and leave your world behind. Come on now. Nah, 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 nah. You've got to come down from that cloud girl and leave your world behind. Is that the same guy from the last post? <laughs> Nothing about you matters. It's all about me, the man. Like, it's just crazy that anybody ever thought like that. It doesn't even make sense. Oh yeah, just forget about everything about you. It's all about me. Yeah, okay, buddy. She also had breasts that were three feet, one meter long, which she reportedly threw over her shoulders as she rode her elephant into battle. <laughs> now we're talking. One meter long tactical boobies? <laughs> Finally, battle boobs. Nah, for real, what are they talking about? It says right above there, folk tales record that she was both incredibly beautiful and extremely frightening to see. Nine feet tall, with a voice as loud and clear as a temple bell. And then yeah, she had one meter long boobs. <laughs> Wait a second, so do you throw them over your shoulders so they don't get in the way? Or do you actually use them to fight? That's a very important distinction we need to make here. You're going off to war. When you told us what you spent all night doing, I thought, what if something had gone wrong? What if Hermia had trapped him or tricked him and simply never came back? Instead of crying when I thought that, my hands just instinctively went to my belly. My empty uterus. It's an instinct, Danny. We want to be pregnant when our man goes off to war. I'm not going to make any bastards, said Danny. Period. Ever. You think your parents are ready to let you marry a high school kid with no job who lives in a shanty like this? Oh, my empty uterus. <laughs> and apparently she's meant to be 16. Like, I understand. Times were different back then. But to instinctively put your hands on your belly and say, oh, my empty uterus, if only I was pregnant. That's a little bit strange. Sarah started to laugh, the convulsion racking her like a deep orgasmo. But it was choked off in her throat by what the cyborg tonelessly said, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> and that's from Terminator 2? <laughs> no way. I know I just read that, but I only just realized that they're talking about somebody laughing. Sarah started to laugh, racking her like a deep orgasmo. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, though. I was ready to call it a day. Then the dame walked into my office. I was stinking of scotch and she was stinking of trouble. She had hair like fire and a smile that could drive a man insane. She had great cans too. And I'll be damned if she didn't have a pair of legs that just wouldn't quit. What 
the hell? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Look at those cans. <laughs> my precious antique cans. My cans. My precious antique cans. Oh, look what you've done to him. My entire life I'd been preparing for this day, married to the devil's son and be a baby making machine. <laughs> oh no. And this is an ad on Facebook. I wasn't scared because people said that he was the devil's son. They couldn't be speaking literally. They were probably referring to his and it keeps going. Yay, finally, I'm a baby making machine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> to the devil's son. Yeah, you know what? I might give that one a miss. The thin girl was gulping down one of Richard's bananas in what was Richard reflected, the least erotic display of banana eating he had ever seen. Wow, Richard. Eat your bananas however you want to eat them. No, 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 you have to eat bananas sideways because otherwise you know what you're insinuating. Or like what, you just ate it too fast? Or like too messily or something? Go away, Richard. The width of her hips was enormous, but she was as breastless as a boy. Wow. <laughs> you know, like, that's nowhere near as bad as some of the stuff we read on this subreddit. But, like, did you need to put that in there? Or could you at least be more creative and, like, less weird and gross about it? The width of her hips was enormous. She had really big hips. Listen, it's all bad. You shouldn't be describing any of this sort of stuff, but at least do a good job of it. Oh, hold on. There's way more. Wilma, who one night on her father's front porch had bared her cone-shaped breast to him. <laughs> <laughs> they were like little ice cream cones. And Elsie Simpson wasn't no chicken either. Two kids besides, and that flat chest of hers. Is this entire book about people's boobs? The girl Hazel, on the other hand, had never had a man. She also was 26. She was broad bottom despite the inverted running exercises she took every night before retiring. Expansively bosomed, small footed, with delicately tapering wrists and dimpled fingers. Had a full, aggrievedly pouting mouth and reassuring eager eyes. Blah 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 and had a silent yet continuous absorption in men. <laughs> this is just their fantasies in a book. Oh there's more! Full bodied as a rounded russet apple perfumed and lank. I've been married twice, gone to bed with 34 different men, only 12 of whom she could have named off hand and only one of whom she remembered sentimentally. And Hazel the virginal watched jealously. What? <laughs> this is crazy and it just keeps going. Her figure, though small, was long-legged. She was voluptuous in the bust and wide of mouth. That's the second time they've talked about, like, big mouths. Yeah, we're starting to see this guy's preferences. He felt the plump wriggle of her plump body. You know, don't put plump right next to each other. As it slid in beside him with sudden acuteness, he received the full impact of her plump woman. You're gonna say plump again? <laughs> of her plump womanly warmth. Oh guys, I think I'm out of here. With all my plumpness, I'm going to leave today's video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did and you're an absolute legend, make sure you smash like, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment down below what you thought. Men writing women is so good, but also so bad. I had a great time today and I'm glad that we read all of this terrifying stuff. It's good and it's bad. No, I shouldn't say that. It's not bad. My favorite thing thing to do is take terrifying subjects like this and make it all a little bit more digestible. So yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Alright, today's comment of the day goes to Jamie. I watch your videos while getting ready for work every morning. The perfect way to start the day with humor and wholesomeness. Ah, oh, Jamie, you legend. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed the videos and I'm glad that they put you in a good mood in the morning. The perfect way to start your day. Alright guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful night and I'll see you tomorrow at the exact same time with two brand new fun videos. Or like, you know, I probably should stop saying that because I have been posting one video a day a little bit here and there. Maybe I just need to start saying that I'll see you tomorrow or something because I will always, I will always have at least one video up a day. I don't think I'm ever going to completely miss a day. So yeah, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe one, maybe two videos. I'll see you then.